Hello and welcome to video 3 of this series. Even though this video is going to focus on the music system, if you haven't seen the previous videos, make sure you do that because there are going to be some overlapping concepts. So right now we're going to be talking about the music system, transition timelines, and how to use a script in Unity to send messages to the music system in FMOD. Now before I talk about how everything works, and what all these individual components are for, I'm going to first let you listen to the whole system yourself. So the music system is divided into four components, as you can see over here with the markers. We have intro, melody key 1, melody key 2, and finally death. Controlling all of these transitions are three game parameters. Game started, is under half health, and is dead. The game started parameter easily enough just communicates to this system whether the player has started the game. So when you first play the scene, a screen pops up saying do you want to play the game or do you want to read the tutorial on the level. So when the player presses play game, the game started parameter gets set to 1, and that controls this transition region right over here. The is under half health parameter gets set to 1 whenever the player has dropped below 50% health. So that's used to control this transition region right over here, 2 melody key 2. And finally, the is dead parameter gets set whenever the player has died or reached 0 health, and that controls this 2 death transition region. Now you might have noticed that there's one stereo file for the intro, one stereo file for the death theme, and there's four stereo files for each melody key. This was done to give you an idea of the flexibility and the possibilities for a system like this. The music system in this game could have well worked with stereo files for each of these sections, but what if we wanted something more? What if we wanted to control different layers depending on what was happening in game? We could have placed a trigger region around the player that was tied to the camera view and would only play a certain layer such as counter melody when the enemy was in view. So if no enemy was in view, we would hear this. And if an enemy came into view, it's important that when you're designing the music system, you think about these kinds of things. Are you going to use one full stereo file that plays the whole time? Or do you want to split the music up into different layers or stems that react to parameters driven by the player? This would also depend on the technical constraints such as memory and CPU, because you would be playing a lot more audio files at once, in this case four, versus just one over here. So that's something to think about as well. And just in case you are wondering how you change the color of these audio clips, just right click on the clip, go to set color, and select one of these colors. This is just a benefit for organization to be able to tell which file belongs to which layer. So now if you notice, some of these transition regions have a small circle on the corner right of the region. This means that there's a transition timeline. So normally in a transition region or a transition marker, whenever the right parameter condition is set, the transition would go from wherever you are in the transition region to the destination. And this would happen right away or on the next bar or beat, whatever selected. So an example of that here is I'm going to play and then I'll transition to death and that'll be instantaneous. And then at the end of death, that also transitioned into intro. So transition timelines can be created by double clicking on the transition region or transition marker. So double click. And as you can see, it opens up this completely separate timeline. Let's just zoom in. And it's very visually different from the rest, so you can tell that it's a transition timeline and not a part of the regular timeline. I'm just going to switch from the time view to the beats and bar view. So when you first create a transition timeline, it just opens up and there's nothing in it. You have to populate it with something. So this is what it would look like if you just opened it. And then you would add the short musical file transition that you have. 
So this is what it would sound like. So that's not quite what we want because this file is actually two extra beats of decay. Thankfully, in a transition timeline, you can create an overlapping transition. I'll just increase the track size. And now what you're looking for to create this overlapping transition is the cursor to change to a specific icon. What you're looking for is this icon. As you can see, it's a vertical rectangle with an arrow coming out to the left. Now, if you click, hold, and drag to the left, you can actually overlap the transition. And as you notice, the marker for Melody Key 1 even shifted over here to show that it's within this transition timeline. If you close this transition, you'll see the Melody Key 1 marker back where it should be. This is just a visual indication to show you how this transition is going to overlap. Now I'll just finish overlapping the rest of these files. And that is how you create an overlapping transition timeline. Now let's hear what it sounds like this time. So whenever you're doing something like this, it's important that you do have the rest of this audio file, the decay of the transition out file to work with. Otherwise, it would just sound like this. If you listen to that closely, you'll hear a noticeable cut in the bell decay from when the transition happens because there's no decay left in this audio file. So now I'm going to close this up and open up the other transition timeline. As you can see, I'm using the exact same concepts on this transition timeline as the previous one. The only difference this time is that I have four stereo files, one for each layer, instead of just one stereo file to start off this transition timeline. Here's another example of why you should overlap your transitions with the decay from the previous audio files. So here they are without the decay. And again, here they are with the decay. And just a quick tip, if you accidentally create a transition timeline, in order to get rid of this, all you have to do is drag the green area on the timeline to the left all the way until it disappears. And that gets rid of the transition timeline if you accidentally create one. If you just double click on it simply, it's still going to be there and it's going to cause problems for you. Now let's head over to Unity and find out how to use C Sharp script to control this system. So now over here in the completed assets folder, in the scripts folder, I've created my script in the managers folder and it's called music control. What this script is doing is first it's starting the music event and then there's also three functions for the relevant parameter. To start off over here, I have an event ref, and that's a public string called music, which is just the location or path of the music event within fmod. Next, I have an event instance, and that's called music ev, short for music event. So in the start function, we're first creating an instance of music, or this, and then we're setting it to be equal to music ev, and finally, we're starting the music event. So it's at this point where you start to hear the music playing in the game. And now these three functions over here, let's take a look at them. I've added a comment over each function to tell me when the function should be called. These three functions are going to have to be called from different scripts. And just before I show you where these functions are called, let's take a look at how to set a parameter in the script. So over here we have our music event reference, and then we have set parameter value, and then all we need are two things. The name of the parameter we want to set, and then a value as a float. Now that that's done, we just need to find two scripts, one that keeps track of whether the player has clicked on the play now button, and then another that's keeping track of the player health. Right now, I'm only going to show how to do this for player health, but as a hint, the other script that you're going to need to do this to is the tutorial info script. So I'm going to open up the player health script now, and over here I'm going to make a reference to the music control script, and I'm going to call it music system. Now I just have to go over to the player game object, and over here where it says music system, I just have to look for the object that has the music control script. So I can click, hold, and drag, and that's it. And then back in the script, all I have to do is look for two places where I can stick the is under half health music function and the is dead music function. So this is going to be in a spot where the player's health is being kept track of. Now back in the player health script, scroll down and look for a suitable spot. This take damage function is going to be our starting point. Over here, you can see it asks if the player current health is less than or equal to zero and the player is not dead, then run the death function. 
And then once we're here, we just add a call to the music system. We just type in music system, which we linked up to the music control script, and then we tell it to play the is dead music function. And one more time, the is dead music function is simply telling the parameter is dead to be set to one. For this other function is under half health music, which is set whenever the player health is less than 50%. Let's go back to the player health script. And over here, as you can see, I've already finished the if statement. So all I need is an if statement that's asking if the player's current health is less than or equal to 50 and the player is not dead, then I want the music system to play the is under half health music function. So now you've seen how to set the parameters in the music system from the music control script within a different script, in this case, the player health script. You should now be able to do this from whatever script you like, even the tutorial info script from when the player first presses play game. So that's all for this video. So in this video, we took an in-depth look into the music system, and we also took a look at transition timelines and how to overlap those transitions. And finally, we took a look at how to create a script that will set the parameters of the music system and how to call those parameter setting functions from another script, such as player health. Join me in the next video where I'll show you how to create a snapshot system for when the player is on low health. Thanks for watching.